I'm not going to read out one of the most controversial bits of the Bible. It's often used to justify slavery and was used particularly in the US in the for this in the 19th century. I'm using the King James Version. Don't tell anybody. As, I, as Catholics are meant to use it, but I like the I like the linguistic approach in the King James Version. Um, Genesis chapter 9, 8, verses 18 to 29. And the sons of Noah, the wind forth of the ark, were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah. And of them was the whole earth overspread. Must have been busy boys. And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard probably explains the busyness uh, and he drank of the wine and was drunk and, and was he was uncovered within his tent and ham the father of canaan saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without and shem and japheth took a garment and had laid it upon their shoulders and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backwards and they saw not their father's nakedness and noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him and he said, Cursed be Cain, and a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Cain shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Cain shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. This particular passage in the Bible was for a long time used to justify slavery, as it was a common belief that all three races of humanity could be traced back to the sons of Noah. Uh, as a result, since in the passage, um, Noah curses Ham, Ham is, was considered to be the ancestor of the black races, and it was used as a kind of justification to show that he was destined to be a servant or a slave. It's still used by some extreme evangelicals and, and a few right-wing groups within the church, the Christian identity movement, who have particularly ugly theories on this, are well known for talking nonsense about mudbloods and similar rubbish about black people, and are best avoided. It's best to run away very quickly if you encounter their members, I've found, as they seem to have bees in their bonnets about this endlessly. Um, generally, I tend to try and be tolerant of every other Christian denomination, but the Christian identity movement is a particular exception to that rule. Um, in any case, there's an, an, a further, more convoluted version of this of this whole theory is a hermetic hypothesis of recent years, where it's, where you have the idea of everything of value that ever existed being brought to black people by white people, because black people are viewed to be so thick they couldn't do anything without white people. In a moment, I'm going to read out some of a rather lengthy academic document about that, not all of it. It's one of those waffly documents you academics write. We're rather notorious for using 26 words when one might do. This particular passage in the Bible was for a long time used to justify slavery, as it was a common belief that all three races of humanity could be traced back to the sons of Noah. Uh, as a result, since in the passage, um, Noah curses Ham, Ham is, was considered to be the ancestor of the black races, and it was used as a kind of justification to show that he was destined to be a servant or a slave. It's still used by some extreme evangelicals and, and a few right-wing groups within the church. The Christian identity movement, who have particularly ugly theories on this, are well known for talking nonsense about mudbloods and similar rubbish about black people, and are best avoided. It's best to run away very quickly if you encounter their members, I've found, as they seem to have bees in their bonnets about this endlessly. Um, generally, I tend to try and be tolerant of every other Christian denomination, but the Christian identity movement is a particular exception to that rule. Um, in any case, there's an, an, a further, more convoluted version of this, of this whole theory is a hermetic hypothesis of recent years, where, it's, where you have the idea of everything of value that ever existed being brought to black people by white people because black people are viewed to be so thick they couldn't do anything without white people. In a moment, I'm going to read out some of a rather lengthy academic document about that. Not all of it. It's one of those waffly documents you academics write. 
we're rather notorious for using 26 words when one might do. Here you go, it's time for another torturous bit of verbose waffle from your, from your lovely channel presenter. This is from the Journal of African History from 1969, page 521 to 532, printed in Great Britain. The Hermetic Hypothesis, Organs and Functions in Time Perspectives by Ethan R. Sanders. The Hermetic Hypothesis is well known to students of Africa. It states that everything of value ever found in Africa was brought there by the Hamites, allegedly a branch of the Caucasian rates. Aside, apart from relatively late Semitic influence, the civilizations of Africa are the civilizations of the Hamites. It's history the record of those peoples and of their interactions with the two other African stocks, the Negro and the Bushman. And the all right and racist groups today love playing with this stuff still. Whether this influence was exerted by highly civilized Egyptians or such wider pastoralists as are represented at the present day by the Bijans of Mali, the incumbent and Hamites were pastoral Europeans arriving wave after wave, better armed as well as quicker than the dark cultural Negroes. Basically, anything of cultural values the Africans have is brought in by the Hamites, but the Hamites themselves are cursed from the Bible to be servants. You can see where that's going, can't you, quickly? Suddenly, it's God's will that they be slaves, boys. <laughs> On closer examination of the history of the idea, there emerges a previous elaborate Hamitic theory in which the Hamites are believed to be Negroes. Yes, you have that as well. In fact, that this whole set of theories would introduce cognitive dissonance in the most quick-witted mind. It becomes clear then that the hypothesis is symptomatic of the nature of race relationships, that has changed its content if it's not its nomenclature through time, and that has become a problem in epistemology. In the beginning, there was the Bible. Good joke, good, good academic dry joke there. The word ham appears there for the first time in Genesis chapter 5, when they all nip down to the deli to get a sandwich, probably. Noah cursed Ham, his younger said, son, and said, Cursed be Canaan. As I've just read all that, I'm not going to read it again, because it, I'm going over the same point twice. Then follows an enumeration of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and their sons who were born to him after the flood. Those familiar with, the, with Genesis in the Bible and large parts of the Old Testament will know that people banging on about their ancestry and na doing nameless is, is a very big part of the of the Old Testament. The Bible makes no difference of racial differences among the ancestors of mankind. Remember that. This is there's no, no one tells you anything about the particular looks of Shem and Ham and Japheth. It's much later a, a race of Ham appear. The idea of a race appears with reference to the sons of Hams. It concerns the descendants of Hams. The Babylonian tablet, a collection of oral traditions of Jews, appeared in the 6th century AD. It states, scrolling down, the descendants of Ham are cursed being being black, but this is something that's been backwritten. The Bible itself is much older, especially Genesis, which in Genesis is, has several sources, and the first part of Genesis has several accounts of mutated, which have over time been pushed in together. That's a topic for another day, but worth investigating if you're happy, if you're interested. Uh, returning to this bit from the sixth century, and depicts Ham as a sinful man; his progeny is degenerates. Thus, early tradition identified the Hamites with Negroes, endow them with both certain physiognomical attributes and an undesirable character. This notion persisted in the Middle Ages, when fanciful rabbinical explanations of the Genesis stories were still being made. Ham, some of them said, was supposed to have emasculated uh, Noah, who cursed him thus. To be honest, whatever is going on in that passage in Genesis is is a subject of huge, convoluted, and often very angry debate. I'll read out this this quote because, because it illustrates how odd this back writing was getting. And now I cannot beget the fourth son whose children I would have ordered to serve you and your brothers. Yeah, that's come out of nowhere. Therefore, it must be Cain on your first bone whom they enslave. And since you have disabled, be doing ugly things in blackness or night. Canaan's children shall be born ugly and black. More because you twisted your head around to see my nakedness. Your grandson's hair shall be twisted into kinks and their eyes red. Yeah, this sounds, sorry to, to say this, but this has a typical sound of people creating a narrative to, to, to prop up... Um, colonialism, slaveholding, or similar situations. 
Scholars who study the Hebrew myths of the Genesis period claim that these oral traditions grow out of a need of the Israelites to rationalize the subjugation of Canaan, a historical fact validated by the myth of Noah's curse. Talmudic or Midrashic explanations of the myth of Ham were well known to Jewish writers in the Middle Ages, as seen in this description by Benjamin of Tudala, a 12th century merchant and traveller south of Osman. There is a people who, like animals, eat of the herbs that grow in the banks of the Niles and in their fields. They go about naked and have not the intelligence of ordinary men. They cohabit with their sisters and anyone they can find. They are taken as slaves and sold in Egypt and neighbouring countries. These sons of Ham are black slaves. Ideas have a ha way of being accepted when they become useful as a rationalisation of an economic flat of life. As Graves and Patai put it, that Negroes are due to serve men of light of colour was a view gratefully borrowed by Christians in the Middle Ages. A severe shortage of cheap manual labour caused by the plague made the reinstitution of late slavery attractive. The notion of the Negro Hamite was generally accepted by the year 1600. In one of the earliest post-medieval references found, Leo Africanus, the great Arab traveller and one-time protege of Pope Leo X, wrote about Negro Africans as being descended from Ham. So as you can see, the whip is falling across everyone here, Jews, Catholics, and it's going to fall across other Christians as this story goes on. He's translated the Englishman, John Pory, followed the text with his own commentary, in which he stressed the punishment suffered by Ham's descendants, thus reinforcing the middle in modern times. I'm not going to go on to read all 10 pages of this, but I think this would give you a, a good idea of this underlying myth about Ham that's done the rounds in historic circles, and it's become twisted and convoluted. The new, a new twist on it, of course, and a new reinterpretation, often by people who don't even realise they're doing it, is that of all right and far right groups who insist that black people haven't got any history and couldn't even do anything without white people and invented a stick in 45,000 years. And what Anne, who typed that sort of rubbish endlessly on forums as though that shows their great intelligence, not realising the irony. <laughs> this should offer up a small insight into the complicated matter of why and how slavery was justified. And embarrassingly for me as a Christian, there are plenty of Christian groups who did so. I'm not going to let them off the hook. I'm not going to pretend it wasn't done. It was wrong. And uh, this is a historical shame. Having re listened to this, you should have some idea about the care needed when approaching people going on about these kind of concepts of black people being stupid and needing to be learned or trained. It's only this sort of stuff being restated again.